So I'm working on a new bed design and like most projects this always starts in a 3D modeling program called Fusion 360 and I thought I wanted to give you guys kind of a quick look on the main reasons that I use Fusion and some of the big features that I find really really helpful especially when I'm building furniture inside of my shop. All right, so let's get into the first one and it's going to be parameters, which I have mentioned in other videos before, like when I compared Fusion 360 to SketchUp. So jumping into Fusion right now, um, you can see the bed that we are making. And the big thing is if you go up here to modify and you go to change parameters and what parameters are, they basically let you assign values to a parameter. So if I'm going to make like my bed width and length, instead of just hard typing in that they are 38 inches and 75 inches, I can actually make that a parameter. So this entire bed right here, this mattress, this whole frame is sized around that bed. And this is actually a twin size bed. So let's say I actually wanted to change uh, maybe the length of the bed, we get something a little bit wider. So maybe it goes to 45 inches. And when I hit enter, you're gonna see that not only does the bed extend, but a ton of other things extended. So the overall frame extended. And if I turn the mattress off as well as the top frame and there's actually drawers in here. Um, those extended out this drawer over here, those extended out and all of those parameter changes go all the way through even to the plans, which we'll get into here in a minute. So another parameter that I find really helpful is doing the actual thickness of the wood. In this case, this is three quarters of an inch plywood and then the actual drawers will go in there. Um, this is actually half inch plywood. But again, I made that a parameter. So let's say for whatever reason, um, my plywood thickness Maybe it's like not quite at 0.75, maybe it's 0.71. And then everywhere that I have that applied, you can kind of see it, it just shrunk. And actually, if I just make it 0.1, you'll definitely be able to see it. And so you can see now that that thickness is crazy, but everything is still connected. Everything is still working and it's looking really well. So as we're going through this, you might be wondering how I actually model the bed. And so I've got a link down below. You can check out kind of a full tutorial where I've broken out different videos into different steps on how I did this thing for free. All right, so the second thing that I find really helpful when doing furniture designs, especially furniture designs that are gonna have moving parts like drawers uh, or even like hinges is actually working with joints. So there is an entire assembly joints module inside of Fusion 360. 60. And what I find really helpful is, especially if I'm doing drawers. So we just took all of the top pieces off, but you can see we actually have several different drawers in here. And that was something kind of unique about this design is um, we wanted to have some baskets going in, but then there's a lot of like dead empty space back here. And then there's also these drawers right here. And I've set some of these actually up with a joint. So what's nice is I can kind of get an idea of how much space this is going to take up. If I have it all the way extended, uh, and then when it's all the way pushed back, I can kind of get in here and figure out, all right, how much room do I have to work with? Where's all this stuff gonna go? Uh, and then even things like this, uh, we wanted to have like a little charging station that could slide out. It's not gonna be out all the whole time. And so this one is actually set up with a min and a max. And so um, I can't actually pull this any further. So I can actually see the limits. I find that being able to, to have especially things slide or hinge in and out are really helpful when I'm doing designs and figuring out where I want things to go, how far things can stick out. And really what I like the most is, let's say I knew that I wanted maybe this to come out that far, whatever that distance is, but then um, just having the joint connected, I then know how basically how far back um, I need to make a wall or figure out the frame on the internals. So the next element that I find really useful is the ability to do renders. Uh, there's a couple things that I use for that. The biggest is really figuring out um, especially if we're gonna paint it, um, what it's gonna look like. So this isn't gonna be what it finally is. And it's really easy to change stuff up. If you go into the appearance um, area, you can actually pull in a ton of different styles, a ton of different things, and you can apply appearances to things. So I do the powder coat smooth a good bit. This lets me just drop in colors. Let's say I wanna make um, this blue for whatever reason. And so then you can change up all the colors really quick and you can see what a blue frame would look like and it would look really bad. What I really like about this is you can actually start to stage 
your designs and then take it into a full rendering environment and get an idea of how this works. So um, this is a, a different version and basically what I built is a couple walls, almost like a little set um, with some molding at the bottom. And then because I've got this drawer that's gonna pull in and out, I wanted to actually have something on top of it so you get an idea of what it looks like. So um, you can pull in models from Fusion 360. Um, a lot of folks have uh, modeled them and you can just download them directly in. So I got a phone as well as a little coffee mug. I think there's actually a coffee inside, which is kind of fun. And then you can actually do custom textures. So this was actually just a uh, an image that I downloaded right here and then applied it just because I wanted to do a kind of a rough mattress look. But you can go super, super custom with all this kind of stuff. Um, but what's nice is once you have stuff staged, then if you actually go into the real rendering environment, uh, there's a whole different section for that. Um, it's going to step up the quality. And so now it's giving you access to lighting. And so I'm going to move the lighting around a little bit and you can kind of see how things, different things are going to look. And then after, actually, if we zoom out, you can see it's basically like it's on a virtual set um, with these big lighting elements. But then uh, kind of once you play around with the settings and get it the way that you want to do, you can do full out renders. And so but these are just a few examples of some of the quick ones that I did. You can see it's looking a little bit nicer. And this especially is really nice if you are trying to show an idea to someone, uh, let them kind of see what things are going to look like. And these I, I didn't render high quality, so some of like the reflections are kind of weird. And so you get kind of a better idea of what your final piece is going to look like. And there are people that are a lot better at the rendering side of things than me. But even with just with a couple props and a little set put in there, you really can kind of get an idea of what this thing is really going to look like once you're done with it. So I can actually come over here and just pull this drawer out and then have it set up however I want. So then when I actually go in and render it, um, you're gonna have those things showing up. So the joints will kind of play in to that. So the entire just rendering environment is always something I find really useful whenever I'm doing models on the front end before I start doing an actual furniture build. All right, so this is probably what's gonna be the most useful if you guys are actually building furniture. And in this case, that is actually creating plans. And so um, they call them drawings inside of Fusion. You can create uh, custom views of different drawings. You can actually do multiple pages inside of one drawing. And then you can actually bring in different views of the same model. So in this case, maybe you want a page just showing the actual frame. Um, and so I haven't formatted all this, so it doesn't look um, super nice yet. But you can see you've got these callouts are all automatic. It brings all of these in and then um, you can actually have everything listed out and then you can go in with the description which I did in the next one and then you actually type in what the dimensions are going to be so you can make a cut list uh, really easy doing it like that and then this is uh, the drawers on the side I've got a custom one for that as well and then I was working on the bigger drawers in the middle a uh, custom one for that as well with overall dimensions just to show you how easy it is um, i'm just going to come up here make a new base view i'm going to drop it in right here and you can change how it looks and if you do one that isn't isometric so it's like front right left whatever uh, actually we'll do a front one and then you can have it either look uh, rendered or it can be um, just the lines but then you can just go in here and hit d for dimension and then you can start dropping in dimensions wherever you want them to go. A lot of times before, I would basically have to take screenshots, then go back and manually add in the dimensions, having to like remeasure everything if I'm using something like SketchUp. But in this case, I don't have to do that. So then if you guys remember our parameters, this is where it becomes really, really helpful. And a lot of people will be like, I can model so much faster in a program like SketchUp. Um, it sure seems it takes you a long time to set everything up before you can get going, which is the case. You can uh, model pretty quick in something like SketchUp, but this is where Fusion is super powerful. So let's actually go back into my model. I'm going to modify the parameter. In this case, we wanna change the overall width. So we're gonna make this 42 instead of 38, which is what we did earlier. This is gonna update. And now if I actually save this, come back here and it's gonna say, hey, you have a reference you need to update. So I click that, it updates, and I'll watch this dimension right here. 
So now you can see that this has updated to 42. So with this full bed design, what I could go in is really simply make a twin size, which is what this is, make a king, a queen, uh, whatever other size beds there are. And then you can have the plans automatically update. You can have a lot of different versions based off of the same design. Another cool thing about the plans also is you saw kind of right here that um, this isn't kind of your typical view. I've actually expanded this and this out. So same with this one. Um, these are kind of like exploded views just to kind of give you an idea of where things are going to go. These are kind of like, like the Lego little diagrams. That's kind of what I'm trying to mimic. And so there's another environment inside of Fusion. If you come over here to animation and you can see I've got different storyboards set up right here. What these do, you can actually create little animations so you can have things spin around, you can have parts move. But what I find really nice about this, if I make a new one, is um, I can actually go in and I can move uh, different pieces. So let's say I want this actually to be over here. And maybe I want this to be up here for whatever reason. And then maybe I want this to be over here. You can see down here, it saves it as storyboard five. If I save this, now I go back into my drawing environment and then we're gonna go ahead and make a new sheet real quick. Add in a drawing and then you can actually not only pull in your model, but you can pull in a basically a view from a storyboard. So I'm gonna do storyboard five. That exact thing that I just did is gonna pull into here. And if I make it top view maybe, now I can actually dimension directly on to here. Uh, and do all the other stuff that you could normally do. Like maybe I don't want the mattress to show up because I want to see inside of it. Um, and you can see all those different pieces are going to show up like that. So that's another piece that's also really nice about the render environment. I've just put out a big course on how I do Fusion 360 specifically for doing these furniture designs. So we go step by step through the basics on how to actually download this guy to how to actually make different types of models. We build some furniture. We do a cool uh, mid-century modern credenza. We even do a trebuchet with joints and all that kind of stuff. So we get into rendering, we get into plans, uh, we get into cut lists, actually putting those onto sheets of plywood, kind of my full process on what I do inside of Fusion for making furniture. That also is linked down below if you want to check it out with a promo code because you guys are watching it here. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.